Some events are great when experienced once, but sometimes you got to do it again. Got beans, again. Greens, potatoes, Avery potatoes, Entertainment lamb, presents lamb, a return oh, it. of the You Name It Tour. Pastor Shirley Caesar right. headlines this dynamic encore. Oh, Saturday, November 12th at the Sumter County Civic Center. Also featuring come from a bowl the Canton Spirituals. We didn't have much. Those Mississippi boys are coming. But the love been good to me. Doc McKenzie and the highlights. I live so dark can you be anywhere. The Gospel Legends. Roy and the Revelation. The return of the You Name It Tour. Saturday, November 12th at the Sumter County Civic Center. Doors open at 2, program begins 345. Platinum, VIP, and advanced tickets available. Get them at Eventbrite, Imports Limited, and Sumter. House Music Hut, and Undisputed Barbershop. For info, call 803-846-9872. Well, hello there, everybody. How you doing? Oh, this is going to be a good service tonight, and I want everybody to participate. I want all of you to participate. It's going to be a great one. I need your advice. I need your input. Uh, we didn't invite a guest tonight because we need your input on this topic. And the topic tonight, somebody can write it in the comment box for me. It's going to be, if you don't know, please keep your mouth shut. And if you do know, is it necessary to tell it? Oh, that's going to be a powerful show. If you don't know, please keep your mouth shut. And if you do know, is it really necessary to tell it? Let me say good evening to you, Miss Miracle Davis. Good evening to you, May Margaret Crosby. Um, thank all of you for tuning in. We're going to get as many of you as possible. Hello, Miss Dina Brown. Um, let's see who else I have not spoken to. Miss Annie Yar Yarbury, I think that's what it is. How you doing? Mr. Wayne Perry, how are you doing? Miss Eartha Singleton, how you doing? Miss Evelyn Harris Lowe, how you doing? Miss Mary Mah Mahogany, Phoenix City, Alabama. Thank you for tuning in. And I don't believe this beautiful lady, Miss Teresa Finesse Dixon. How you doing? Helen Osborne, how you doing? Helen, I tried to call you. You need to inbox me because I, I needed you to call me. I got something for you. Um, Lorenzo Knowles, how you doing? And Nat Downs, how you doing? Thank you, Dina, for putting the topic in here. If you don't know, please keep your mouth shut. If you do know, is it necessary for you to tell it? Let me see. I done lost somebody. Uh, what is that? Margaret? Margaret. I think that's what it is. Um, she's Australian. God bless you for tuning in. Um, Teresa Harris, first time listener. But you got my attention. How about that? Thank you so very much. Uh, Catherine Davis, thank you for tuning in. Jeanette, thank you for tuning in. Patricia, thank you for tuning in. Um, Lisa, thank you for tuning in. And we are glad you're home from the hospital. Ann, thank you for tuning in. Um, let me see. Who else? I think that's it. Now, thank you, Dina. I want everybody feedback because I don't know it all. I can only give what I think. So I need everybody feedback. If you want, um, hello for New Haven. Is it New Haven? I got, let's see, two aunts and two uncles in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, now, I know I cannot pronounce this name. But to you right here that's on my screen, hello there. Um, let me see. Lady Prophetess, hello there. And Miss Barbara McKnight, hello there. Let me say, y'all, have somebody ever told something about you that wasn't true? Have anybody ever said anything about you that wasn't true and it just hurt you so bad? Hey, Vet Staley. And let's see, he said he's from. Yvette Staley, 
Thank you for tuning in. Um, from Dallas, thank you for tuning in. And from Mississippi, thank you for tuning in. Let me tell you something. You, you, I'm going to tell you something, but don't tell nobody. How many of you have heard that? I'm going to tell you something that I heard, but don't tell nobody. Do you know we repeat, and I said we, I didn't say you, we repeat things that we hear, and we don't even know them to be true. We all have done it. Ain't nobody on here that have not done it. And I'm going to give you my full attention in a minute. I'm trying to share this with somebody that wanted me to share it with them. We hear something and we immediately get off on the phone, call somebody else, and we say, child, let me tell you something what I just heard. Let me tell you what I just heard. And we get on the phone and we tell what we just heard. And lo and behold, we find out later on that it's not true. Are we not just as guilty as the person who told the lie? Are we just not as guilty? How many of us from time to time have done that? I have. I say I have. Now, let me go back up to the top. And y'all talk back to me today. Thank you, Yvette, for telling the truth. She said she did. Miss Evelyn said that she have. Um, Miss Cynthia from Captain, uh, Compton, California. Uh, Jeanette said she have. And so many of you said you have. How do you take it back? How do you take back what you said? If you spread something to hurt somebody, if you said something to hurt somebody and you found out it was not true, it hurts to the bone sometimes. I know it hurt me. And I say, God, what can I do to make up for this? But it was a lesson learned because we can hear things to the air that, that it sounds real good. And I'm gonna put y'all comments up here. We can we can hear things through our ear and it sounds juicy. It's good gossip. It's something me and my girlfriend can talk about. It's something that me and my mate can talk about. It's something that me and my civic club members can talk about. But then when we find out, a lot of times we won't even apologize to the person and they know that we was a part of the gossip. We know, they know that we was a part of the go gossip. That's something, ladies and gentlemen, that we don't ever want to find ourselves in. That's not an easy pill to swallow. Uh, Nettie said, once it's out, you can't take it back. You can't take, ooh, y'all doing comments so fast, I can't keep up. One, you can't take it back. You can say, I'm sorry. You can say, please forgive me, but you can't take the words back. Catherine Davis said, words you can't take back. Be careful what you say. That's just the bottom line. But a lot of times when it's not concerning us and it's not concerning our family members and it's not concerning uh, somebody in our household, we're going to run with it. Oh, we're going to run with it. That's human nature. Yes, Cynthia, we can ask for forgiveness, but we can also learn a lesson from that. And do anybody, can anybody tell me what is the lesson that we can learn by running our mouth about things that we don't know? Now, we're going to get to the flip side of that. And uh, we're going to get to the part where it's true what we told. But the second part of this conversation, just because it's true, is it necessary that we tell it? Teresa said, you own up to it and go by and correct the lie if possible. I absolutely agree with that. Gloria said, oh, okay, Gloria, I got you. But, you know, it's, it's, it's something we all have found ourselves in. It's something that we all have found ourselves in one step at a time. I'm not, let me see, where am I at, y'all? Oh, here we go. Miss Evelyn said, go back and try to explain and ask that person to forgive you. Well, I have a question. What if that person say, I'm not gonna forgive you? I won't forgive you for what you said because you were supposed to be my friend and you jumped on the bandwagon and you believed what other people say. How do you handle that? Dina said, you can't take words back, but you can ask for forgiveness, okay? Um, Nettie said it's embarrassing and it is embarrassing. It really is. Um, Netta said, bright of the tongue. That's something we all must do. And Marquita, Ma Margaret, 
I never hurt nobody. I am one beautiful getting hurt and blame after my husband died seven years ago. I am the one beautiful. I think I understand what she's saying. I think I do. You can write it over if you want to. Um, don't be a trash can for gossip. Well, Cynthia, that is true. But sometimes, now I'm not making an excuse, but we all know sometimes that thing can sound so good. It can sound so good. And in our mind, we say, I knew it. I knew it all the time. I knew it. No, we didn't know it. We had, we, we in our mind, we thought we knew it. In our mind, we thought we knew it, but it just wasn't true. Barbara said, regardless, words hurt. Yes, words do hurt. You know, um, that saying that they had um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt. That's not true. That's not true because words do hurt. Um, to well, let me just say, Miss Harris said, I am guilty. And it was a lesson learned. Now just keep my mouth shut and my ears open. Very good. Very good. Mamie said, good evening. Good evening to you. Lisa said, when another call come in like that, I won't talk about it. I don't want to hear it because it's judging. Okay. Now that's the flip side of that. Let me let me do what Patricia said. Patricia said, we tend to say things that we can't take back out of hurt. People are getting hurt and killed. Just not good. Need to change ourselves, be born again, and righteousness. Um, let me see, where am I at? We tend to say things. Okay, I think. Let's see where I'm at. Y'all, these things come so fast. I don't know where I'm at now. Okay, here we go. Um, Teresa said, unless you hear it from the horse's mouth, take it as a grain of salt. Now, that's real good advice. That's good advice. But I'm going to ask y'all, let's be real on this platform tonight. Is it right what I'm getting ready to say? No, it's not right. It's not right at all. But you know, everybody like a little bit of gossip until it happens to us. Until it happens to us. Mamie said, think before you speak. Absolutely correct. Lisa said, I'm learning from a lot of mistakes before Christ, but still learning in Christ. Amen. Uh, Dina said, once said, that tongue is like a paint tornado. I know what you're talking about. Mike Jones said, whether they forgive you, it's not up to you. Ask for forgiveness and let them make that decision to accept. Absolutely agree with that. Um, Patricia said, words do hurt. Oh, my God. Y'all hear that? Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm scared of lightning and thunder. And if it get too bad, y'all going to see me disappear. And we just have to continue this tomorrow. Um, I purpose and practice not to hurt others with my speech. I try my very best not to. I'm going to tell y'all something in a few minutes. Evelyn said, just don't do it again and show that person that you won't do it because saying it is not enough. I absolutely agree. Saying it is not enough. Sometimes you got to live it. Sometimes you got to live it. I meant you're beautiful and I have one. I am the one. Oh, you've been treated like a doormat. Join the club, honey. Join the club. I've been treated like one too by people that I've helped the most. But God, but God, learn better, do better. I absolutely agree. I'm enjoying this right here. Thank you all for your feedback. Once we ask uh, forgiving, praying, they would accept it. We have to move on. I absolutely agree with that. Whether they accept it or not, we got to move on. Anne said, you can let them know I have learned to say things to help someone and not to hurt them. What if it was you? Think about it before you speak. I, I totally agree. Um, LaTracy said, good, you know, good evening to you as well, New York City. Um, I heard that. Wow. Oh, you heard the thunder? Yeah. Um, let's see where I'm at now. Hello, Miss Virginia. Um, we are talking about tonight. Think about it. Is it true? Is it necessary for telling? That's my 
question. That's my next question. If somebody tell you something and you for sure, you 100% know what they're telling you is true, is it necessary for you to jump in the gossip conversation? Is it necessary for you to jump on the bandwagon? Even if it's true, even if you saw it with your eyes, you heard it with your ears, is it necessary to tell it? Is it really necessary to tell it? Uh, Lisa said, it's funny because how do you know it is real? So I called to find out because others were saying the same thing. Blessing, 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 blessing. Um, um, I almost call you Pastor T.C. Smith. <laughs> I almost call you Pastor. But good evening. Uh, Mr. Lorenzo Knowles said, this is our real talk. God knows it because me and my sister had this conversation earlier today on the same topic. And whoever wrote that message, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt. They don't know they were talking about. They don't know what they were talking about. So I'm definitely going to share this with my sister. Thank you so very much. Um Sharon, boy, you're saying no. Oh, okay. You're saying no, it's not necessary to tell it. Teresa said it's not necessary to tell it. And let me tell you something. A lot of people have come up. They said, Loretta, um, did you hear about so-and-so? I say, what? What? Now, I know what they're getting ready to tell me. But I'm not going to let them know that I already know. Because nine times out of ten, here's what that person is going to do. They're going to come to you. They're going to say, did you hear about Jack and Jill? And if you say, yeah, I heard about Jack and Jill, the um, the next thing that you know is going to be Loretta said that Jack and Jill, and Loretta didn't say anything. Loretta was just, hello, Miss Hicks. Loretta was just um, sitting there seeing what you was going to get ready to say. But here's the thing, where you're in bad company and people are sitting there talking about person after person, situation after situation, circumstance after circumstance, you need, to, you need to dismiss yourself because the next thing you hear, you're going to be caught up in some stuff that you said that you don't even know you were supposed to say it. Patricia say, no, it's not necessary. Whoever said it, it's their conversation. And I totally agree. I totally agree. Do you not know we all have people that's upset with us now? We don't know why. We got some people who stopped talking to us now, and a lot of us don't know why. We had good relationships. We don't know why the person stopped talking to us. It's because some gossip. And a lot of times, let me say this, it's because we were in the group that was actually doing the gossip, but we were not doing the gospel. We gossip. We were just sitting there. But because we were sitting there, oh, God, I done hurt. I done lost where I was. Okay. Okay. Um because we were sitting there, we were made the guilty party as well. So here's my next question. If we sit there and we listen to them talk about somebody and run somebody down, are we not just as guilty? Hurt people hurt people. And that is a fake. Eartha said, yes, indeed. Thank y'all for responding. Y'all are helping me. Miss um, um, Marsha said, let them know up front it is some if it's not positive or we can't help them i don't want to hear i don't want to hear it that less People know, oh, let people know where you stand. I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Miss Virginia said, yes, words can hurt. I've been made to feel like I'm nothing. And I have too, sister. I have been made. Let me tell you, if everything people said about Loretta Coleman was true, I could write a million dollar bestseller. I'm telling you. And I hear about it. I said, what? I was supposed to do that? Um, Alice said, praise God, I'm growing every day. That every word said do not need a response. Just let God, just let go and believe he got you. Amen. This is good stuff. All of us can learn from these conversations. Shannon said, um, Janice Shannon says, so true. Um, Mamie said, that's right. Walk away. Got to walk away because I'm telling you, if you're in the wrong crowd at the wrong time, 
you can get caught up in some stuff that you don't know how you got caught in and how you're going to get out. I'm more than one person. If more than one person is holding the talk, yeah, tell, but call names and tell me what you said. I totally agree with that. Don't tell me what they said if you can't tell me what you said. Um, Margaret said, a rejection is God's protection. 100%. I 100% agree, agree with that. I used to cry when people rejected me, but I thank God he was protecting me. Uh, Rob Hall said, if a dog bring a bone, he is looking to take one back. That is so true. Uh, Sharon Boyd said, the smaller your group, the better you are. I totally 100% agree. Uh, Mamie Mitchell said, that's right, walk away. Um, Pastor Fluid said, when you have experienced the hurt of gossip, it should be it should change your conversation about other people. True? Oh, 100% true. If you've been caught up in a lie and a scandal, then how in the world are you going to lie and gossip about somebody else? Because the hurt that you experience, you don't wish that on nobody. Gloria said, no, it's not necessary to tell it. Someone was upset with me yesterday because I didn't tell them that such and such had COVID. That's not my place to tell that. If they wanted them to know, they would have called them as well. I honor people and their private conversations with me. I do too. I take it very, very serious because when a person shares something with you in confidence, it is supposed to stay with you. Catherine said, we are. Teresa said, the more you stay in the Bible, the less you have to gossip. Come on now. Y'all, this is good. This, this is helping all of us. Um, Jean, Jeanette said, it happens in smaller groups also. It do happen in smaller groups, but let me tell you something. My circle is so small that if something do get out that I that I told them, I can pinpoint who told it. That's just how small my circle is. If somebody, and see, I know who I tell what. I got four close friends. I don't tell all four of them friends the same thing. So if I tell one of them people something, Oh, I know the one who told it. Hey, Rosa, good evening. And see, that's what, that's the advantage of having a small uh, circle. I deal with a lot of people, but I got a small circle. I deal with a lot of people, but I know who to talk to and who not to talk to. Miss Harris said, yes, we are guilty, but we got to learn to walk away from those types of conversations. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Bob Rogers said, when they come to you and talk about someone, tell them, Let's pray for them. That's that's good advice. That's real good advice. Um, Lisa says, I learned, but I'm glad I found out early. T.C. Smith said, dismiss yourself before the conversation gets started. <laughs> that's, that's very good. Uh, Jesse said, I share what God told me about sharing a.k.a. gossiping information with others. God told me just because it's the truth, you're not lying. It doesn't mean that you need to go and tell everybody. And, and that's really true. That's really true. If it's storming, okay, bye-bye. Um, Patricia said, don't tell me what they said. Why was they so comfortable talking to me about talking to you about me. I've always asked that question. How are you so comfortable letting them talk about somebody that's supposed to be your friend? How are they that comfortable? Good evening, Miss Aria. If you got a friend and they can sit around people talking about you, you better check out who that friend is. Ain't that right, Celeste? You better, if they are comfortable gossiping Valley Val about you, you better watch what you tell that friend. And see, here's what I do every now and then. And I, I, I spotlighted Val. I done lost where I was again. Where was I at? Lord, please let me fall back on it. You were guilty. Teresa, Jeanette, James. Bob, Lisa, TC. Did I do? Okay, yeah, I did that one. 
and I was on Val. Oh, there we go right there. Um, now I lost my thought. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you what I do. I go fishing with people. Uh, you know, when you go fishing, you have to throw, uh, put the bait on the fishing line and then you have to throw the fishing line out in the water. And then you wait for the fish to bite. Well, I just throw a little something that I don't care if somebody get just to see how far it will go, just to see if they're going to bite the bait. And a lot of times, y'all, the bait is being bitten. Peggy said, that's, he say, she say, and they say it's nothing but drama being started. Yes, I agree with that, Peggy. But some people can sound so convincing that here to make a lie sound like the truth. Some people can be so convincing that they can make a lie sound like the truth. But Tracy said, I catch it later. The family is taking me out. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Patricia said, I learned my lesson a long time ago. I'd be like, don't pretend to me. Have a blessed day. You just have to remove yourself from things and let God. I totally agree. Um, Jerome said, pray more, talk less. I agree with that. I 100%. If we did that, we would keep ourselves out in a lot of trouble. Miss Rosa said, keep silent. We got to. We got to. Miss Arthur said, some people tell you things because they know you're going to tell it. Absolutely. D listen, they don't have enough guts to tell you, but they tell you stuff because they know you're going to go back and repeat it. And they want you to, they, they want you to know that they said it. So here's what I do. Helen said, don't get involved in it. Here's what I do. When somebody, when I know somebody has told somebody, to tell me something. They'll never get the satisfaction of knowing that I know they said it. It may hurt me, but they'll never get the satisfaction of knowing that that person told me because I'm not going to address it. Um, Gloria said, my circuit's small as well. I can count, count them on one hand. Great points, Loretta. I love you too, darling. I really do. You know, I, if I know you got it out for me, I ain't going to go to you and ask you. Well, I heard you said I'm, what I'm going to do when I see you. Hey, girl, how you doing? Hey, man, how you doing? You doing all right? And I know that you expected something else to come out of. Uh, um, you you expected me to say something else, but you know what? I'm not going to give them that satisfaction, Patricia. Every action don't deserve a reaction. You're absolutely right. A lie will travel, but the truth will stand always. Well, what happens Jerome said a fish would never get caught if they don't open. Oh, my God. Somebody type this in there for me. A fish would never get caught if they don't open their mouth. That's what people need to do. Mind their own business. I tell you, that's about that preach right there. Um, oh, OK. But I'm telling you, we all are learning tonight. It's not a person that's on this these platforms tonight that have not been lied on in some form of fashion and you you know you you walk up to a person hey how you doing and you don't know that somebody done told them that you are supposedly saying something and you're like dumbfounded because they barely spoke to you and and you're trying to figure out what is wrong well just because you was with that bad company and you might have been with that person who they know don't like them. And just because you was with them, then they automatically believe what they said, that they were the conversation and you was a part of it. Patricia said, I lie, don't care who tell it. Don't care who tell it. Don't care who tell it. Mamie says, sometimes people gossip just to see the reaction. Your app's a good point. Sonia Adams said, and hey, Sonia, yes, I had a lady didn't want anybody to know she talked to me. Red flag. So I started recording everything of her talking, of her talking to everyone. And one she claims wasn't her best friend. But God's folk mad at me for what? So I said the truth will be revealed. People will do that. People will do that. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. And thank you for tuning in. Um, it's it, when people see you progressing, when people see you doing things that they want to do, the first thing they're going to try to do is bring you down. And what's the quickest way 
a person can try and bring you down is by telling a lie, trying to sabotage your name, trying to sabotage your work, trying to sabotage um, your brand or whatever it is you do. People try to do that. People try to do that. Good evening, Freddie. People try to do that. And you know, we fall into it every time we fall in that trap. I tell them to get a life. Amen. Miss Mickey. Hey, Miss Mickey, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in from Georgia. Um, Miss Virginia Johnson. Amen. But we all, y'all, we, we have to watch our tongue because I had this person went and told this national gospel artist that I said something. Okay. Well, they asked me, was I going to a particular uh, program? I said, no. I said, I don't have, it's not in my finances to go. It's not really in my finances to go. I said, and when such and such leave the program, they're going to have their money but I'm not going to have mine. I said, and I got to pay my light bill and my rent is due. So I'm not, I'm not going to spend my money going down and in the name of support. Now, listen to me. I believe in supporting, but if I got to choose between my light bill money and my rent money, then buying a ticket, I ain't going to do it. I, you know, but they went by and they told the artist that I said, uh, she said, you got more money than she got, and she ain't going out there doing nothing. That's not what I said. I said my lot bill was due and my rent was due, and I was not going to take my money by no ticket. Now, he didn't speak to me in seven years. Seven years. Seven years he didn't speak to me. Good evening, Elizabeth, with God bless, and watching from South Hill, Virginia. Thank you. And, and, and you know, I'm like, I call over and over, over and over, and they wouldn't talk to me. They changed their phone number. Everybody had their phone number but me. And so I, I never knew. I kept saying, what's wrong? What's wrong? What did I do? But they wouldn't tell me. But what I did, come on now, I got to take care of my home first. That's right, Patricia. Um, What I did, I was sharing it with another friend of mine. I said, you know, me and this person was close. Me and this person, we ain't went together, nothing like that now. But me and this person was close. I could call them, they answer just like that. I could text them and tell them to call me, they text me just like that. But now you gonna believe somebody who ain't even your friend as much as we went through? And you, as much as we went through, as much as I did with them, they choose to believe that person over me and then after they found out the truth, then they wanted to be friends again like they were. It couldn't happen. I could forgive them. But once you you didn't think enough of me to come and tell me for seven years what somebody had said. For seven years, you held that in your heart. And as close as I thought we were, you couldn't even tell me what that person told you. Jesse said, like my aunt advised me, first let them talk the story. Then I'm so glad that you called me and let me know, girl. Now put the phone on speaker and let's pray for them and the situation. That's a good way to do it. That's a good way to do it. That's a good way to do it. It's a good way to do it. And I done lost where I was again. Yo, I tell you, Lord, have mercy. Uh, these things popping up so fast. Let's see where I'm at. Okay, here I go right here. But, you know, I, I just, you know, and I was hurt by that situation. I, I, I just couldn't understand. And then I, I asked him, I said, why did you choose to, and here we go. I said, why did you choose to believe them over me? He said, because they were so convincing. So convincing. But what that person did, our tongue is the most dangerous member in our body. That's why we need to learn how to control it and let go and let God. I totally agree. Um, amen. Let's see. Miss Ann said, good evening. Good evening. Miss Patricia said, people don't understand that God is not competition. He is our creator and he sees all things. He sees and he hears. He sees and he hears. And I try to tell people. You, 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 you text something, you text it, you text it and you say, 
I'm a, I'm a, I'm a text you something, but don't tell nobody. Let me tell you something about these things right here. You text somebody something you don't want know, they're going to screenshot it and send it to somebody else. I know what I'm talking about. I have gotten screenshots about myself from people. I've gotten screenshots. It one on one in particular almost destroyed me mentally because it was a person that I held in high regards and high esteem. And, and Elizabeth, when I got that text about me that wasn't intended for me, it almost totally destroyed my inner peace. Janice, because I never knew that that person felt that way because what they did, they 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 just played the part and they didn't give me any signs, Eartha, that they felt the way that they felt. Yeah, that's why I keep to myself. I got used, abused, blame enough. <laughs> and you know what? We're going to keep being that way, but we got to watch. We got to watch. And you know what? A lot of signs are there. First of all, you're going to watch that person who keep telling you um, it's always somebody else. They always got some gossip. They always gossip about somebody else. They always telling you what somebody else said. Okay, well, is that the kind of people you hang with when you're not hanging around me? Okay, you're my friend. They don't necessarily have to be talking about me, but all the time you got something to say about what somebody told you. Well, that kind of, that's what y'all do when y'all get together, sit down and have a, a gossip session. Plus your cell phone don't transmit emotion, just words. Exactly right. Exactly right. I know that's right. Same thing happened to me. I'm telling you, I've gotten several texts about me. I have this lady and, and, and you know, let's talk real talk. Man, this lady was close. I don't talk to her no more. How can you talk to a person? I speak to her. If she called now and she says she don't have no groceries, I'll go in my cabin and get some groceries, but she can't have my trust back. You got to be careful on these things right here because you be on three-way and you hear things that can do totally destroy your peace. And you can't say nothing because you don't supposed to be on the line. You supposed to be listening. You know, I'm going to call and I'm going to let you listen and then I'm going to ask them a question. Hey, Cheryl Snell, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. And, and uh, they say, I'm going to ask you a question. All I want you to do is listen. Don't do it. Don't do that. Don't listen because here's what happened to me. And this was about 20 years ago. I promise God I would never have nobody else on three way and they didn't know it. This happened. I'm, I'm just being honest. About 20 years ago, I told a person, hey, Facebook user, I said, I'm going to let you listen to a conversation about you. By 20 years ago, I, I, I'm telling you, I did it. I did it. And Lord, that person was saying some things about that person, and that person came off a hole, and they said, oh, this is the way you feel about me. <laughs> Ooh, and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you know, my mind was shocked that they came off a hole. Boy, I clicked that phone off so. But that taught me a lesson. I ain't never, I have never after then let anybody listen on a three-way at somebody talking about them. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't risk it. It's not right. But when that person came off a hole and say, oh, that's the way you feel about me, that was a lesson because I should not have done that. Gloria said, when you're a foot soldier, when you're a foot soldier for God, there will always be a, always be a Judas. Always be a Judas. Always be a Judas. There will always be one. But now how can we as men and women of God, how can we make a difference when somebody come and tell you, girl, let me tell you something. And let me tell you something. Don't believe everything that's on Facebook. Don't believe everything you see on Facebook. Don't believe everything somebody seeing you in Messenger. Because a lot of stuff that's on Facebook and stuff that people see in your Messenger is not true. It's not true. Now, here's what I started doing. If you come to me and you say, Loretta, I heard, you got to tell me who said it. If you can't tell me who said it, don't tell me you heard nothing about me. If you can't tell me who said it. Now, if you can't tell me who said it, I don't want to hear it because I'm going to ask them. And if we are face to face, I'm going to call them in your presence and find out, you know, because anybody, do, 
Woo, Jesus Christ. Do you not know that there are people upset with me now something that I was supposed to have said and I don't know nothing about it? And we fall into it every time. But here, uh, you know, if y'all don't hear nothing else, I say, hear this. They tell you, Patricia, may I use your name? I don't even know you, but may I use you? I'm going to use your name. Patricia Mamie. I'm going to use your name. They come and they say, Loretta, Patricia said, Loretta, Mamie said, and it sounds so good. Now, Patricia and Mamie know me. They know me. They know that I'm not like that. They know that that's not my character. But yet they believe what somebody come and tell them about me that I said about them. If you really know me, you will say, no, Loretta didn't say that about me. If Loretta says something like that, she meant ABC. So let's just call her and see what she means. But see, we won't call the people and we won't ask them. Well, did you say ABC? We'll, we'll just get animosity in our heart. We'll hold grudges in our heart. We'll stop talking to people. We know. Our pr- <sighs> if I spend my money on you, whether you're a friend or uh, 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 acquaintance or associate or what, if I support you in what you do, you can better believe I don't have nothing against you because I ain't going to do it. That answers your question right there. You understand what I'm saying? So you ain't got the one. And then another thing, if you think, and I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking in general. If you think somebody has said something about you, ask them. Ask them. If if they are true to themselves, they're going to say, well, let me let me say this, and then I'm, I'm going to get back there. Every knee shall bow, every mouth must confess that in the name of Jesus you turn your turn, your turn, my God, my God. Yeah. Um, golly, I forgot what I was getting ready to say now. Well, maybe it'll come back. Maybe it'll come back. But um, say that. Oh, but if um I don't know what I was saying, I don't know what I was talking about, and it was a good point too. God, Lee, help me, Jesus. But you know, I I we we waste so many times. Um, if somebody would call me and they would say, Harold is one of my dearest friends. We've been friends for 30 years. We're more like sisters and brothers. Um, he's married, got a family, so it ain't nothing like that. But nobody can't come and tell me Harold said nothing. Nobody can't come and tell me Harold said nothing. If they come and tell me Harold said something, I'm not going to believe it. But I'm going to say, Harold, Sonia said this. Is that correct? Is that correct? Or did you did you mean to say that? Or how did you say it? Oh, I know. I know what I was getting ready to say. I know what I was getting ready to say. Now, if I forget again, y'all, re- here's the clue. A new dress. If I forget again after I read these, a new dress. Sonia says, so true. The world will be a better place if we just talk to each other and not fall out with each other we're adults. I totally agree. Patricia said, you don't have to say a word. I can see it all over your face, that facial expression. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, Steffi said, yes. Now, here's what I would get ready to say about new dress. We're at an event. It could be a church. It could be a gospel show. It could be a comedy show anywhere. And somebody can have an outfit on. And I say, Oh, I really don't like that outfit. Now, that's what I said. I said, I don't like that outfit. Well, then that person that I said, I don't like that outfit to, then they go, that person said, Loretta said, that outfit didn't look good on you. That's not what I said. I said, I didn't like the outfit. I didn't say that the outfit didn't look good on them. But do you not know that's what we do, how we twist things, what people say? That's what we do. Gloria said, Judas slept and ate with Jesus. Good point, good point. He knew him as well, but Jesus acknowledged his actions and went forward with his gospel. We have to pass the test and keep God at the center of it all. Very good point. But y'all understand what I'm saying, how gossip can get out? I didn't say that they shouldn't have on that dress. 
I said, to me, the dress was ugly. You're right. They made a mountain out of a molehill. But see, if you really know a person, you would know that's not what that person said. Um, how did they say it? Why did they say what they said? But we won't do that. We immediately think somebody is against us and was talking about us without finding the facts. Without finding the facts, we immediately think negative, and that's not the right thing to do. It will have it will it will have us in bondage. It will have us in odds with people. It will have us um, self uh, with self doubt about ourselves. Like God, you know, I didn't say that. God, you know, I didn't say that. God, why did this person hurt me? I did everything I could to help this person. Now this person uh, is upset with me, and I don't know why. Gossip travels faster than them truth. And I totally agree. But let me ask y'all this. When you know you've been lied on, now listen to this. When you know you've been lied on and it was somebody that you love dearly, somebody you had great admiration for, somebody you would have gave the world and they just blank. They just stopped talking to you. You ask that person, what have I done wrong? Did I do something to offend you? And they say, no. Now, you know that that's not true. A person ain't just going to stop talking to you. And you are used to being close to them. They ain't going to just stop talking to you. They ain't going to want to not have nothing to do with you unless somebody told them something you said. It's not fair, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm saying this to you because a lot of people have lost some really good friends by believing things that people have said. They didn't take time to find out, is it the truth? They immediately believe. And see, me, Loretta Coleman, I can forgive you. But if you don't believe me and I tell you I didn't say that, I'll forgive you, but we can't deal. We can't, how can I trust you when you couldn't trust me enough to tell me that I had supposedly done something to you? Oh, no, uh -uh, it can't work like that. No, you got to think about, see, these are things. Hello, um, Tallis, I think that's what that is. See, these are things that we got to be quick to, um, we got to do quick thinking. We got to weigh the odds. We got to count the costs. We got to know the people that we're dealing with. We got to know our friends. We got to know. And you see, you can be getting along, Miss Virginia, with somebody. People don't like to see people get along, so they're going to concoct a lie. Because they see you hanging together, so they automatically say, well, they be together, so she must have said it. No, 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 no. Been there, and I gave it to God. I've been there, too. But they'll do it. They, they. Oh Lord, I've been through it. I've been through it, Miss Taylor. I've been through it. I've been through it. You can't believe me. You gonna believe somebody that just came and told you something, and I done did everything I possibly could to have proved to you that you were my friend, and then you choose to believe somebody else. Yes, I'll forgive you, but you can't get my heart back. Because what if you get my heart back and you break it again? I'm glad that you brought this up. It's really, let me see, I lost it somewhere. Dang, on it, boy. I don't know if y'all be on the other side of this and see how these messages come. I'm glad you brought this up. It really, true people will cut you. I'm telling you, they will cut you off and not even know that it's the truth. Somebody you've been friends with for 20 years. Somebody y'all y'all done spent the night to your house, then an ate at your house. Y'all done went shopping together. Y'all done prayed together. Hey, Pastor Vincent Ellis, how you doing? Man of God, you are. Man of God, you are. And, and you done did all that. And they going to believe a lie? What? That's an insult to your intelligence. I think that it's, as the word says, so, so a man think it, so is he. So are you saying to me that that person felt like that all the time? Birds of a feather flock together. I'm going to answer that for you. I shut down. Ain't no coming back. You're speaking the truth. Um, you're looking good. Thank you so very much. Um, thank you, Pastor Ellison. Uh, not only friends, Loretta, but mostly happen with family. Uh, exactly. It'll happen to family, too. But let me tell you now. 
they have been some people that have been genuinely friends. But you gave that devil just, just a half an inch to get in and, and start feeding you stuff. The first mistake you made is to listen. When that person said, well, let me tell you something about your friend, Connie. And I use that person's name because there's no Connie on here. You should say, oh, no, no, don't tell me nothing. I don't want to hear nothing. That's my friend. But you entertain it. And that's where you make your mistake. You speak the truth 100%. I have daughters that tend, tend in me worse, that treated me worse than a dog. So horrible. The lies that come out of their mouth, they cut me off. My friends, and after my husband died, they closed the door on me. Thank you so very much. And we'll be praying for you, sister. Everybody on this line, remember this lady right here in your prayers tonight. Patricia said, yeah, and that's true. No, 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 don't tell me nothing. If you get ready to tell me something, my friend said, let's call him on the phone, then I'll let you tell me. Family will turn on you when the gray train stops. First time I heard that. But yeah, I mean, don't. Because if somebody tells you something and you hear it, as much as you want to dismiss it, it's going to be in the back of your head. As much as you want to dismiss it. So I'm saying to you, <laughs> family will turn on you when the gravy train stops. Yeah, I'm saying don't even listen. Don't even listen. Don't even listen. Because I'm telling you, those words will play over and over. And that person can be so innocent. To And, and, and then you start acting funny. And, and you let the devil use you and discard that friendship. Please keep my sister in prayer, Louise. She's going through some of the same. I certainly will. I certainly will. Um, Pastor Ellison said, evil communication corrupts good behavior. And it does. It, it, it does. It really, really does. He said, if you want something to die, don't feed it. Oh, my God. That'll preach right there. Y'all put that in the comment box. If you want something to die, don't feed it. I mean, this, this is good stuff. And this will help all of us. But I'm telling you. Now, I have done some things wrong in my life. I've said some things wrong. But if, I, if I'm with you, I'm with you. If I'm down with you, I'm down with you. And it hurts me so bad when I'm loyal to you and then you kick me. And you kick me. You kick me and you don't believe that I didn't say what you what, what you're believing the other person said. That gets me. And, 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 and I have to ask the Lord to help me because when I trust you, I trust you. When I don't trust you, I don't trust you. But when I give you my trust, it's nothing that I will do for you. But then you're going to sit and you're going to listen as somebody tell you something I said. And you're supposed to be my friend. If you want something to die, don't feed it. That's right. That's right. I, I just, you know, I could be wrong. Y'all could, could uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Marnie said, there are families who will lie on you because they think you're doing better than they are. And they are jealous of you. And that is absolutely Oh, what did I just do, y'all? Hold up. I did something. I don't know what I did. Um, yeah, I'm here now. Okay, they never a liar. Um, let's see. Gloria said, hey, oh, he, she's speaking to a pastor. But I'm telling you, y'all, we got to do better. Stop believing everything somebody tell you. Stop believing everything somebody tell you. Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. You say, God, if this is true, you reveal it to me. Don't go on what people say. Because people sit down and they 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 think of stuff to destroy friendships. They are jealous of the friendship that you have with somebody else. So they set out to destroy that relationship. And then we fall right into it. Repent, repent folks, because there won't be any gospels in heaven. The devil is a liar. Amen. They like mess. I'm telling you. Um, Jet White said, for real, for real. That's true. And we sit and we let people destroy Minister Lee Burgess. We let people, we, oh, oh, don't tell with Loretta. Oh, did you hear this about Loretta? Let me tell you something. 
And people that know me, they know exactly what I mean. If you didn't hear from Cam and Angel, it ain't so. Cam and Angel is my dogs. And when I want to talk about something, when something really ticked me off, I'm going to talk to Cam and Angel. They don't do nothing but lean their head to the side and look at me that way. But I'm going to sit there and I'm going to talk to them. Because I have people that I know are my friends, Arthur. But there's just certain things I'm not going to talk about. Family sometimes are the worst enemy. You're right. They just sometimes, uh, because I don't want to put that burden on them. I don't want them to see somebody and, and think about, well, you treated my friend like that. No, I try to have peace. I won't. Just because they did me like that does not necessarily say that they're going to do you like that. So I don't want, because somebody do me wrong, I don't want my friends to be upset with them. They can be mindful of that person. But if somebody come to you and they start telling you a bunch of stuff and you see them people hanging together, you need to think about the person that came and told you that. Because if that person can be with the person that they talking to you about, something wrong with them. Something wrong with them. And see, the, the quicker we learn, you're right, misery loves God. The quicker we learn that, the better off we can save some of our relationship. I shared something with someone and the next day a post was made about me about it. And they were the only one I said something to. I didn't question her because I knew where it came from. But today I don't say anything else to her. My aunt would always say, I can't trust you no farther than I can throw you. That's right. And that's what I said. I know what I tell people. Now I might, I might can't, I might can't remember sometimes where I put my car keys. I might can't remember sometimes where I put my pocketbook, but I know what I tell you. Oh, yes. I know what I tell you. Um, my sister did it to me, sad but true. God bless you, sister. But we we can't. You, oh, my God. You can't believe everything you hear. You just can't do it. You just can't do it. Watch who brains the bone. You got to do it. You got to do it. And, and see, I, I just, you know, it's too many things in life that are happening today for us to keep mess going. Um, um, Minister Patrice, well, Pastor Patrice said, I like to find out things for myself because if the person is like others say they are, will do it to me eventually. Yes, that's true. But if the person is as bad as they say they are, then why are they dealing with them? That's the question. If that person is as bad as you say they are, then why are you dealing with them? I know a lot can hurt since the age of 12, but my God is good. Amen. I'm telling you, y'all, we got to do better. You know, people talk about every. there's a lot of killing, a lot of shooting, a lot of murders. Yes, they are, but we can murder people without, with a lie. We can tell a loud person that they can't ever um, recuperate from. We can make it sound so good and juicy that that person can never recuperate. Suppose that were you, that they told that loud. Suppose it was your sister or your brother that they told that loud. Suppose it was your child that they told that loud. Think about this. We can only, I can't search you, you can't search me, but we can search ourselves. Some of the things we have done and said about people, we got to ask God to forgive us. We don't want that to come up in judgment day. Some of the things that we've said, some of the things that we've told, uh, yes, the tongue is a deadly weapon that we were not supposed to share. We need to ask God to forgive us. Because when people come to us in confidence, we don't supposed to share that stuff. We don't supposed to share what other people tell us. A lie will destroy lives, marriage, friendships, and all. And it will. But are we, the question is, are we allowing it to be destroyed by believing everything that we are told? Are we it to destroy people that we know, we know are our friends? And we believe because it sounds good. It sounds good. And you have lost one of the best friends you ever had because you chose to believe a lie. You chose to believe a lie over your friend. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Hold your peace and I will fight your battle. Let go and let God. That sounds so good, 
and that's the word of God, and that is what we're supposed to do. But if the truth be told, sometimes it's not that easy, Sister Eddie. I know it ain't that easy for me because sometimes I want to go to you and say, now, nah, how can you come to me and say, hey, sister, I appreciate you so much, sister, when you just got through cursing me behind your back, behind my back, I mean, how can you do that? How can you be so comfortable to do that? How can you be so, nothing is worse to me. I'm going to go, I'm gonna, this is one of the things I'm going to close with. How can you be so comfortable? Now, let me say this. I'm not a kissy, huggy person. Like you go somewhere and you see people hugging people, hugging people. Listen, hey, how you doing? Give you the bump. I'm not a kissy, huggy person. Let me tell you why. I was at this program. I was emceeing this program. And I saw this particular person hug somebody. And, of course, they head were that way. The other person head were this way. And the head that was that way was making fun to the other friend over there about the person they were hugging. How can you do that? How are you going to waste your energy doing that? If you got to make all these kind of faces and frowns while you hugging somebody, don't hug them at all. Just don't hug them. Just say, hey, how you doing? I saw that with my eyes and I said, oh, no, I can't do this. No weapon for them. I can't do it. I saw that with my eyes. I can't do it, Aria. I couldn't do that. I can't hug you. I could say, how you doing? You all right? Good to see you. I can do all that. But if you're not my cup of tea, nah, I can't do it. And if I'm wrong, I want the Lord to forgive me. I want the Lord to forgive me, but I just can't. I can't do it. And maybe he need to work on me, I, but I just can't do it. I, I cannot just wrap my arms around you and hug you and and, and rock you like <laughs> you my best friend. I can't, I, can't, I, I, I just can't do that. And like I said, I might, I probably need prayer. I probably need a prayer meet, but I just can't do it. I'm who I am. Now I can speak to anybody. But I just, that's exactly what I do. I speak and keep moving. But I ain't going to be doing all that hugging. People are who they are. I'm not I'm not phony either. And sometimes, why pretend? Why pretend? Sometimes I get so misjudged. Because I'm just, I'm not stuck up. I'm not stuck up. Am I Patrice? I'm not stuck up. I'm not stuck up. Satan is the father of lies. And let him and his imps, like him and his imps. Sometimes they are hug you while stabbing you in the back at the same time. We can't see them stabbing us when they are in prayer. And that's what she was doing. When I said, I, that was just unbelievable to me. I, that was just unbelievable. To, I'm just standing there with my mouth wide open. Like, really? You doing that? Oh, no. I'm going to be myself, Miss Harris. And you see, this, the, the quicker we learn to understand who a person is, the more we'll get along with people. The people that know me from wherever they know, I'm a, if I can do something for you, I'm going to do it. If I can help you, I'm going to do it. But I sure ain't going to be hugging and kissing. I, I just can't do that. Maybe, and like I said, maybe I need prayer. I don't know. Maybe I need prayer, but I just can't do it. I just can't do it. And if I keep asking you over and over again, what have I done to you? Have I done anything to you? And you say you haven't, I haven't done anything. Sooner or later, I'm just going to act like you don't exist. Because apparently you don't think enough of me to tell me the truth. So I'm just going to move on to the next person that will accept the love and respect that I have for them. No, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. No, ma'am, Minister Coven is a great person to know. She will do whatever she can to help you. I know from us. I, I don't mind helping people. I don't mind helping people, but I just can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not going to be with anybody. I'm not just going to hang with anybody. I don't want anybody calling me. What you calling me for? You don't know me. Don't call and tell me no juicy news. Don't call and get me involved in nothing. And, and call here what you're going to say. You're going to say, ah, uh, like me and Loretta were saying. And see, I mean, like me and Loretta were saying. And then you're not going to see the right spirit. I'm just going to tell y'all just real talk tonight. I'm just going to tell y'all it's not going to be the right spirit come out of me. 
And you're going to put my name in something that I know I didn't say? Oh, no. Hello from us. We miss the entire team. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I, that's not going to be sweet. That's not going to be sweet. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. Mm -mm. Don't do me like that. Now, if you can't help me, just leave me alone. If you can't be, if you got to be that person who make everybody else look bad for you look good, just leave me alone. Leave me alone. If, uh, uh, we got pastors and ministers on here. If I'm wrong, rebuke me in love, but that's just where I'm at right now. Maybe you found out for a reason. He may have tried to hinder your walk or ministry. I would be praising God that the veil of deception was pulled off of him. I believe God blocked a wolf. And, amen. Thank you so very much for that. Because I question myself sometimes. Um, you continue to be who you are and don't change. I'm, I'm going to try, but I ain't perfect now. Let me let, me let everybody know that I'm not perfect. Because sometimes, you know, you rub me the wrong way. Why you, you, am I saying that? Sometimes you rub me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Y'all just pray for me. Amen. Amen. I really enjoy you tonight. Very uplifting. Well, I want y'all to um tune tomorrow night. This is what we're going to talk about tomorrow night. We want God to forgive us, but we don't want to forgive others. That's our topic tomorrow night. Now we got this forgiveness thing twisted. We can forgive a person just because we forgive a person. That don't mean we got to bring them home and feed them a steak dinner. You understand what I'm saying? We can forgive a person and move on. Forgiveness helps us. But why do we want God to forgive us when we don't want to forgive other people? We can forgive and move on and go on and keep going. Just because we forgive, that don't mean we got to let nobody walk over us. That's not what the Bible said. And if you think different, when we come on tomorrow night, you have your scriptures ready and tell me I'm wrong. Because right now, I don't believe that. I hear people say, yeah, forgiveness is a hard thing to do, but it can be done. It can be done. And it really lifts loads of weight off of you. It, and and, and cause you know, I walked around for years with hell in my heart, if I must say. I did. I, I walked around in it. I told the Lord, I told the Lord, I don't want to forgive and I ain't going to forgive is what I told the Lord. But I could rest. God would let me rest. He would let me rest. He would let me rest. So I said, God, I said, I don't want to forgive this person, but I know forgiving is the right thing to do. I said, I don't want to forgive this person, but I know forgiveness is the right thing to do. So I need you to help me to forgive. I need you because I can't do it on my own, Lord. I, that's what I told him. I said, I can't forgive this person on my own. I need you. And he did that. I saw that person one day and none of that stuff, you know how that stuff feel like a locomotive getting ready to blow the top of your head out when you see him. That didn't happen to me when I saw that person because I went to God and I told God how I really felt. And I'm going to close with this. This is going to be Woo, good. You can tell God how you feel because he already know how you feel. You can't hide it from him. You might can hide it from that person that you don't want to forgive. But God already know that you don't want to forgive that person. So you know what? You might well do like I did. Be honest with God. Say, God, I don't want to forgive him. I don't want to forgive her. But I know it's the right thing to do. And he'll help you to do it. He helped me. And he'll help you do it. Oh, my God. Let me see. When you have been hurt by those who are supposed to be supposed to love you, makes it very hard. It makes it hard, but we have no other choice because if we want to see Jesus, we got to forgive. We got to forgive. Just keep in mind, just because you forgive don't mean you got to bring them home and feed them a steak dinner. It don't mean you got to take them shopping. It don't mean you got to put money in their cash out. It doesn't mean that, but you have to forgive. Just like God forgave us of things that nobody knew anything about. Just like God, the things that we've done, things that we've thought. Um, we try to set up people and sabotage people and nobody know anything about it. But God forgave us. We can forgive. It's a hard process, but I promise you this. If you go to God and you say, God, I don't want to forgive him or her or the situation. 
but I need you to help me and forgive. He'll help you because he helped me. I'm going to read these and then I'm signing off. It's something in our nature. It started in the Garden of Eden when the snake lied and Adam and Eve believed the lie and disobeyed God and God was right there with them. Um, Forgive, but don't forget. Well, you can't forget. We, we, we. Okay, somebody remind me of that statement tomorrow because if I start th talking about that, we'll be on here for another hour. You can you can forgive, but you can't forget. So somebody remind me of that tomorrow. Um, okay, Sonia, Lord, got to help. He can help you, Sonia. If you listen to me tomorrow night, I'm going to share some testimonies with you. You have to remember that it is a spirit on that person. It's not them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sue said, hey, Sue. Thank you for tuning in. But I'm telling you, you can forgive. And I say this, and I am going to sign off until tomorrow night. If God forgave me as bad as I was when I was coming up, and especially when I was in high school, oh, he can forgive anybody. Because if you got me, I was going to get you back. That's just real talk. I was going to get you back, and I was going to hit you where it hurt. But thank God. Thank God. Thank God he forgave me. Forgiveness is not for the other person. It is for our peace. Y'all tune in tomorrow night. It's going to be good. And bring somebody with you. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you.